In this video, we'll see a few examples of how to find the intercepts of a rational function. Let's start with this example. First, we're asked to find the y-intercept. And as usual, this is pretty easy, because all we're looking for is the point on the graph of this function where x equals 0. And we can do that simply by plugging in x equals 0. On the top, we get 0 squared minus 6 times 0 minus 16. And on the bottom, we get 4 times 0 cubed minus 10 times 0 plus 2. And when we simplify that, on the top we just get negative 16, on the bottom we just get 2, so this is negative 8. So we could say that the y-intercept is negative 8, or we could just as easily say that the y-intercept is the point 0, 8. Okay, what about the x-intercepts of this function? Now we're interested in finding out when y equals 0, and we want to know for which values of x do we have the situation where when we plug in to our function, when do we have that equals 0. And so we want to solve this equation. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by that big denominator, 4x cubed minus 10x plus 2. Can't really squeeze it in there, so I'll just write it over here. 4x cubed minus 10x plus 2. But on the left-hand side, these divide out. And on the right-hand side, we just get 0. So all we have is x squared minus 6x minus 16 equals 0. So in other words, it doesn't really matter what the denominator of this function is. We just need to set the numerator equal to 0. Now this is a quadratic equation that can be factored. So we get x minus 8 times x plus 2. And that means that x equals 8 or x equals 2, negative 2. So those are our two, in this case, x-intercepts. Now what we just did is not exactly 100% correct, and this is an example that illustrates what we might have done wrong in that previous example. We have x squared minus 5x minus 6 divided by x squared minus 1. If again we want the x-intercepts, then what we can do is set that fraction equal to 0, multiply both sides by x squared minus 1, and what we would end up with is x squared minus 5x minus 6 equals 0. We can factor that. That gives us x minus 6 times x plus 1. That gives us two solutions, x equals 6 and x equals negative 1. And so our conclusion would be that this function has two x-intercepts, one, one at 6 and one at negative 1. But the problem is this function doesn't have two x-intercepts. This is actually wrong. And the reason it's wrong is because this fraction, this function here, is not in lowest terms. And the fact that this function isn't in lowest terms causes a problem in this case. So it's not in lowest terms. So let's see what's going on here. To figure out how to get our function into lowest terms, we need to factor the top and factor the bottom. Good news, we've already factored the top. It's x minus 6 times x plus 1. And on the bottom, we have a difference of two squares. So we have x minus 1 times x plus 1. And we have a common factor of x plus 1 on the top and the bottom, so we can divide those out. That gives us x minus 6 divided by x minus 1. And this function only has one x-intercept. If we set x minus 6 divided by x minus 1 equal to 0, the solution turns out to be x equals 6. And we don't get that x equals negative 1 solution anymore. In fact, this function has a hole, so f of x, the graph of y equals f of x, has a hole at the point negative 1 comma 0. So instead of actually crossing the x-axis like we thought it did back when we were doing this naive approach, we actually have a hole and the graph skips over the point negative 1 comma 0 and doesn't actually cross the x-axis there. So we have to be careful when we're finding intercepts, especially x-intercepts, that our function is in lowest terms.